good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this amazing session at entrepreneur awards 2020 in order to confront the rapidly evolving world around us you need to have a system in place to adopt to the changes and that's what we are going to discuss today in this session team how business and markets are changing i have with me an esteemed panel which are also part of our jury at entrepreneur awards so welcome gorav sumit sitar shama good to see you all here thank you for joining us today virtually so we have 30 minutes with us so let's get started so since all of you are part of the jury so firstly i would like to know from all of you what was that one striking factor which all of you were looking for in the winners while you were assessing the nominations we can start with you sumit i think uh, i think the uh, uh, the common theme across probably to me was uh, innovative ideas um you know as as <clears throat> as more and more we see um so my my theme uh, for this session perhaps is adapt and innovate adapt is uh, mostly stemming from the current uh, or where crisis we are in uh, so fundamentally i think adapt and innovate is is something that uh, each company needs to kind of imbibe in today's environment uh, the common theme to your question is clearly innovation and ideas are clearly i would say um majority of them uh, of them would have ideas which are completely new and extremely uh, is something which can be you know time tested and can make a big impact so that's something that i think is 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 really common among the ideas among the entrepreneurs and the deals that you shared sure so is that you are also an investor and uh, share the same vibe that sumit so what have been uh, your thoughts So my thoughts first and so for the first and foremost point that my thoughts exact were were actually about survivability. I think what covid has taught all of us right about now is the good times good times will come to an end and they usually come to an end in a very abrupt fashion and your ability to actually survive out all these crises is something is something is something that's a true test of a of, a, of an entrepreneur. One of the things I actually one of the things I actually loved about this particular panel in the jury and the the jury part in particular was the fact that the bootstrap startups actually had the highest number of nominations that we have actually seen. So while the rest of the world actually sort of fetishizes now raising capital multiple times over, the bootstrap bootstrap entrepreneur is the person who can actually create it up, create a large business from scratch and actually raise it up without getting external rounds of funding. These are the these are the true heroes of the entire startup ecosystem, and these are the people who should also be celebrated when it comes to that as well. And along with this, the fact that traction is something that's proving itself to be great, uh, proving itself to be a uh, competitive moat as of now. because ideas 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 are great everyone has has ideas but the ability to translate those ideas to execution and to maintain maintain the speed of the execution that's actually what's going to determine the success of your company or not so that was actually one of the lens i used when i was actually going and you know actually reviewing all these companies and actually coming up with the final scores for them and uh, you know like uh, like both the panelists said i think a interesting set of uh, ideas uh, that that came out to me i think i uh, you know clearly most of these ideas were relevant and of course that's what i was looking for relevance uh, in some sense i think there were two other things that i was looking for just wearing the hat i do of you know um, you know an an nbfc that works with many many new financial uh, you know uh, financial uh, institutional models one was shelf life to say you know is this idea really relevant the idea is relevant today but is this really going to be relevant 6 months 1 year 5 years 10 years down the line because i think to me shelf life is very very important you know you can have very quick nice good ideas that you get off the uh, of the ground but uh, you know the kind of effort it takes to really get a new business off the ground is only worth it if there is shelf life so that's one the other thing of course i was looking for is scalability to say the model makes sense now it's got shelf life but how big can this grow so i think those are the two things that i was looking for and there were quite a few interesting ideas that really fell in these buckets so indeed very interesting and as a lot of startups are hearing us today in this evening so what would you advise them how can business adapt to a rapidly changing world i'm sure there must be a lot of uh, industry companies which you were speaking guiding right now so what is your piece of advice so so uh, you know the way i see is that uh, Uh, so the, the 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 broadly what we are seeing is that there are mixed bag of trends, right? I mean, there's hyper acceleration of certain hypotheses, there's deceleration in certain uh, sectors, and then new sectors which are emerging, and and there are perhaps sunset of few of them. So one has to now try and focus and and you know pick and choose which are the sectors which are going to be the future sectors in the in in the medium and long term. So few trends that you know broadly you see 
is you know i have about four five themes in mind uh, which which i'll probably rattle out very quickly one is uh, some are known and probably some are you know not as known so first probably is edtech so we see a lot of things happening in edtech a few very fascinating things one one of the th- stuff that i uh, saw was uh, vr technology being used by tier through tier 2 tier 3 students to see how a chemistry lab works so that's quite you know fascinating to me I, i'm so I, i thought that you know bringing knowledge to uh, uh, you know cities or students in cities beyond tier 1 is becoming uh, much more uh, relevant on the other hand we also see uh, large companies getting a lot of traffic uh, 95% of which is uh, free not paid how do you monetize them so these are some of the problems that companies are facing and perhaps there they could be you know of course they are on problem solution mode and some of them could be you know charging token of let's say one rupee per session and stuff like that so something that they'll have to have to figure out um overall digital adapt adaption has gone up significantly but where is uh, affordable cyber security uh, for let's say small to medium companies or even households households also need cyber security today which probably wasn't required or even thought about 6 months ago globalization is a theme that i have in mind people are uh, countries are trying to indigenize themselves there are uh, people who care about the environment where are the 100% biodegradable packaging material for example so there are and there is another theme in my mind which is uh, wellness and immunity but the question is you know consumers don't know what to consume and you know in what form to consume so a lot of education is required in a lot of awareness building is required um, in this sector so i think i think it's important to focus on the opportunities in the sector that you are in and there are a lot of so that coming to you uh, what advice would you have for the set of startups in your portfolio and the startups listening to us right now so then i think the first and foremost is the fact that what uh, what the entire the entire body that everyone's going through now is actually a learning experience for everyone it's important for everyone to make sure that the hygiene factors in terms of maintaining enough cash in the bank to last out operations for a period of at least 6 to 9 months and the basic fundamentals of a business that a lot of people have actually forgotten about are everyone's relearning as of now they actually continue these particular practices as they go forward that becomes number one number two when it comes to when it when it comes when it when it uh, comes to start up the moment you raise around the funding that initial exuberance of actually raising that money and starting to spend that money on a larger office on hiring on hiring a larger number of people doing a large amount of pr etc they need to be more muted when it comes to this they need to be more circumspect about how they actually spend the money as they go forward because if 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 anything at all even the offices and all aren't going to be opening up anytime soon and the need and the, and the need to actually let go of some of these whatever to what i actually like to call white elephants on your balance sheet or, or or on your profit and loss account this is something that all entrepreneurs need to actually look at need to actually look at when they uh, uh, as a carry on business and the third part about this is the human cost of actually running a business is something that most entrepreneurs aren't aware about until 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 it actually becomes a little too late we've actually seen a spate of uh, spate of very large startups as well who raised billions of dollars of funding letting go of employees letting go of employees just because business was disrupted for a period of 30 to 45 days mm-hmm. now the question they should have asked themselves is was it important for them to even hire those particular employees in the first place itself because uh, moving out sorry uh, letting go letting go of people actually has a dramatic impact on their psyche and their mental and their mental health as well so you need to be, be more cognizant and sensitive about the hiring and the firing process that all the companies and all entrepreneurs are actually doing at i think this particular these are the sort of sobering lessons that people can actually carry forward and go through another important thing is if you are if your entire business model is contingent on one means of engagement and the means of engagement actually goes away so what we've seen when it's so what we've actually seen as of now when uh, this one there was a lockdown and everything that's happened it's important for you to make sure that you have a plan b a plan c a plan d and actually sound all this out with your investors your board your advisors so when something actually goes wrong you don't you're not scrambling in the draft trying to figure out what, what you need to do next you already have a plan in place you can use a particular plan as are executing from there on sure shama coming to you as an entrepreneur how you adapted uh, to the changing times that's right uh, you know so i mean i operate in the financial services space you know that has affected quite uh, severely as you can imagine um but however i do feel that we will really see what is the impact on business and markets only after the storm recedes and that's going to take a little bit of of, of time 
so we are not going to see exactly what the consequence of uh, you know the current situation is going to be uh, at least for a couple of quarters is my sense and uh, once that happens in some sense we will see who the survivors are and this is truly going to test uh, the whole thesis of survivor uh, survival of the fittest uh, so i'm 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 looking forward to the next couple of quarters to see what happens but clearly there are a few learnings and particularly when one looks at entrepreneurship i think some of these learnings are very very valuable i think some things will change some things will never change and some some things should never change and i think there are lessons in terms of what should change and there are lessons in terms of what shouldn't change or covid or no covid and let me just kind of talk through some of those those, those thoughts uh, i think it's very clear and you know of course it was very clear to us all along that the world was going the digital way i was hoping that we would have learned the lessons around demonetization in terms of how important it was really to get the whole digital play particularly in the financial space right long ago um we did get bits and pieces right but i don't think we got the end to end uh, you know kind of uh, supply chain as it were in the financial uh, sector correct uh, then i think right now particularly absolutely you know doubt that technology is no longer about efficiency technology is about survival and companies that don't really sort of bring technology to the forefront of their business are going to have challenges in terms of survival and it's very clear you know i mean i'm looking at some of the discussions that happened within my company you know i mean it's just totally amazing how the technology officer today is part of our business discussions and that's how important technology is going to become it's not about technology as a supporter or an enabler but technology as a core of business i think that's one thing i think the other important thing and this uh, this what what i as i said i think that should not change even as we build new businesses even as we uh, you know kind of try the entrepreneur route and uh, strive to uh, quickly succeed or or, or, or quickly fail is the underlying assumption that if i am spending time money efforts capital i ought to be building a business for the long run and if i am building a business for the long run if i'm going to build building a business that's really going to significantly scale uh, and give sort of returns over over the long run then the fundamentals of the business are 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 really key and we are seeing that even in the current environment i think the 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 flight to quality the pursuit of high quality institutions which means institutions which are well governed which are transparent which follow all the sort of uh, you know i'd say core fundamental pillars of um, good governance are the institutions young old <laughs> middle aged i don't think this is ever going to go out of flavor and i think it's even more clearer to me in the last few quarters that you know building high quality institutions is an important thought process for entrepreneurs and somehow when when one goes on the entrepreneurship path what happens is that we spend the initial years trying to figure out what the business is and then say okay fine once i'm stable then i will start thinking of institution i'll start thinking of good governance but to me it's very clear good governance is the fundamental it starts with day one or even even before if one may and to my mind that is uh, that has been very very clear in this last couple of, uh, of months Uh, the last point i have a lot of things to say but i'm going to stop here and uh, you know uh, so that we have enough time for all the other panelists to contribute as well uh, is just simply the need for being versatile the, the need for really really having resilience built into your business model you know it's never been more evident before i think whatever kind of businesses we build they cannot be hard coded you know the fundamentals need to be hard coded but around there around the fundamentals we should be able to move the bits and pieces and make things work even in an environment that dramatically changes while the business builds up so let me take a pause there so so that some as soon as coming back to you again uh, i was moderating another session wherein we had uh, mr raman roy who was saying that as an angel investor his top advice to all the investment companies is to conserve cash during these times so would both of you and shama to as an entrepreneur would you guys agree to it i mean is is it the top most priority which as an investor you would be telling to your investor company and and as an entrepreneur you would do so the moment covid also hit all the companies the first thing we did is we actually started phoning a number of them we started analyzing the financials to figure out okay what can you quickly liquidate and how quickly can you actually start accumulating cash in your balance one of the things we also realized and this is something i think most investors most investors who are investors in startups actually see A number of startups are excellent when it comes to sales, but they're really horrible when it comes to collections. I'm sure Shama, Shama will have some some great insights into that since the entire entire business model actually built upon the collections part more than anything else as well. But the, normally, what happens in these particular sales is a large amount of money is actually sitting as debtors or money that's not been collected, or a or a large amount of some. There are three three primary I would call pools of cash that are that are sort of that are actually untouched by the entrepreneur or most startups. 
Number one are all the sales that they haven't been able to convert and receive the cash flow. These are all the receivables that are actually due to them. Number two is actually it's actually due from the government. It's basically either your income tax refund, your GST refund, etc. A number of them have actually misapplied the rates, or they haven't followed the best practices that other businesses actually do. Due to which, close to about ten percent of their gross proceeds are actually stuck with the government, and actually needs to come back to them over a period of time. And in certain situations like this, that amount of money actually either makes or breaks the enterprise when it comes to. And number three is usually the security deposits, rental deposits, and other money that's actually captured with their vendors and with anyone else as well. So the moment COVID actually hit, we actually sat down with all our entrepreneurs because we've been tracking, tracking the finances, everything for a long period of time. We actually started working with them to help liquidate some of these particular pools of capital there. So they actually start sitting and you know, convert all that to cash. So as much as conservation of cash is important, the thing is even the conversion of any of your assets to cash actually becomes a very essential component of your business as it goes about because. I think what it's what since demonetization, what everyone's actually realized is the moment any of these shocks actually happen, the moment you're sitting on a large amount of cash. I'm talking about cash in the bank, not cash in the hand. Demonetization, I think, taught us all that that's a horrible that's a horrible thing to have. The moment you're actually sitting with cash in the bank, then you would be able to weather almost any single crisis that actually comes up because when everything because when everything actually hits when everything actually hits the roof, now at that point in time when you're actually just grasping and everything is the entire world's collapsing around you. That cash actually becomes the most effective buffer for you to actually continue operations and for you to actually survive survive the particular period down, especially on these endemic shocks when the entire system is actually in a state of shock and nothing is actually happening. It took the government and the RBI have done some bold measures in terms of trying to get liquidity in the entire system. It's debatable about how about how effective that's been. We're still seeing the effects of that play out over time as well. But this essentially converting whatever assets you have to cash as quickly as possible and making sure that learning. And making sure that whatever you have to realize in cash, you realize in cash at the earliest. This, in turn, will actually help your business actually scale up to a much, much longer period. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, completely agree with uh, with the thought that cash needs to be conserved. Um, so what what's really happened in the last six eight months is that uh, a large number of companies in the startup space. Uh, didn't have a sufficient cash runway, um, which can give them security of you know sustainability, keeping their initiatives on, and that has really hit them very badly. So you know companies had runway of three months. I know companies had runway of you know probably two months and so on and so forth. So then they had to sacrifice on their revenue initiatives and new initiatives for growth. Uh, but what has happened is that it's opened up minds of entrepreneurs to uh, looking you know thinking laterally and saying that look. How can we really uh, still survive, uh, manage this situation and period, come out of it strong? And that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. I mean, I I would say COVID has been one of the problems that uh, the, the entrepreneur team has faced. Perhaps they face these kind of situations maybe with less in- intensity, day in and day out. Right? I mean, there is generally there is crisis, uh, especially in the early stage startup, of one kind of the other or the other. Um, so PK, people have raised money uh, in these situations also. Of course, there are less uh, willing investors um, if it's a first-time institutional raise and stuff like that. But uh, people with uh, you know investors on the cap table have been able to raise money uh, because they know each other well. So uh, I, I think it's opened up uh, multiple ways of thinking and alternate ways of surviving for the entrepreneurs. Sure. What are you wanting to? Yeah, you are. There is some echo happening. Sorry, I think we have to skip this. Shama, yeah, can I go for while you know while you yeah. go? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, no, I of, of course, you know, I do think that, uh, you know, ma- maintaining reserves uh, of cash is extremely important and uh, uh, particularly in the financial uh, industry. I mean, most uh, NBFCs uh, and financial institutions operate on leverage, you know, and uh, leverage, of course, in some sense has a direct uh, impact on, on, on your ROE. So the more levered you are, the more you're sweating your equity and the better your ROE will tend to, to look. And hence, it is very, very attractive at some stages to really sort of push on that lever leverage uh, pattern mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 operate at, at at the best or the most of efficient uh, leverage 
but to our minds we seeing that there are institutions and particularly younger institutions uh, you know younger organizations who who have managed to go through this current situation fairly well and i think two things stand out for them one is that they were conserving liquidity they were not aggressively leveraged um part of it could also be because the financial industry has been going through a bad time there has been a liquidity crisis so even if they did want to lever perhaps they wouldn't have been able to so that was the situation uh, but you know maybe it's been a boon in disguise uh, for the industry so i think and institutions that were not very very highly levered were in a better position because you know the moratorium was implemented uh, you know there was no choice for in terms of providing moratorium to your borrowers but it was not always very clear that your lenders would provide you that moratorium so it was not a mirrored moratorium in that sense so liquidity was very important maintaining cash reserves was very important and i think the next important thing was really making sure that you are operating at the optimum opex and i can't underestimate the importance of opex not during the times of crisis but during the the, the times of normal uh operations of business i think opex is something that one looks at when in steady state and i think in today's world no organization can really afford periods of time where they don't really worry about opex opex is the stuff that you need to worry about every day and if it's really sort of top of mind as far as you're concerned as an entrepreneur in particular because you may not always have those deep pools of capital to tap into at all points of time you you you, you control your opex and you're in a much better position to ride uh you know uh, situations like this where you know you don't have to do crazy things like letting go of you know thousands of employees just because you can't survive for the next 3 months or so uh so i think these are two really really important uh, uh, you know i would say uh, factors that showed up show, uh, that are showing up well for for companies that are really managing to ride this current situation uh, rather uh, rather positively or you know rather uh, you know i would say strong so uh, siddharth uh, this question you can answer and maybe sumit can also question this question is from manikant singh is asking during this cop period we all have a perception that only necessary products will be consumed by the consumers and all the other requirements will be postponed for some months so what do you think about the same and how the business in the luxury se- uh, segment should market no no so so i think see essentially like at the at the very uh, at the very inception of covid i think everyone were actually gone and stocked up on their dals and their supplies and vegetables and everything during that but the thing is that they scarcely spend also were taken an initial hit but the moment things started getting better and people started getting accustomed to the entire covid situation then that then the spend started actually increasing over time one of the parts one of the parts is also be looked at some of the the consuming pattern of most of the of most of the consumers have actually dramatically changed as opposed to making a very large purchase up front a number of people are now getting more comfortable about the fact of actually taking emi uh, actually taking emi or other sort of financial products in, in order to subsidize their spends so the consumer behavior right now because it's coming is coming from a place is coming from a place of shock it's coming from a place of fear is to actually conserve as much cash as possible so am i paying a small amount of cash for the longer period of time so anyone who's actually working in the consumer goods space or working with anything that's considered as part of your discretionary spend it's going to be important for you to actually align align and actually create some sort of financial products so that your customers can actually still utilize still utilize your products while actually while actually not paying a large upfront fee uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the very starting point itself i think this has been one of the greatest changes we've actually seen and we also noticed this even when it comes to the consumer goods like even when it comes to something like a car when it comes to an e bike when it comes to anything else like this for example it comes to tv etc people's preference now is to actually look either go for bargain hub and for bargains or to actually hunt for financing options as part of that entire piece as well so i think most of the people who are actually looking at this who are in the particular sector these are going to be important points for you to keep in mind as we as we actually navigate this current crisis sure so much would you like to add to it yeah <clears throat> so um so i think the way i am looking at these this is to look at the sectors which will come back earlier than the sectors which will come back later so like you know sectors for example uh, apparels uh, color cosmetics and stuff like that they seem to be coming in later in the chain um sectors which are more like wellness health and hygiene are certainly up front um so so i think i think uh, everyone has to look at it from a more uh, holistic point of view um things which were working 6 8 months earlier may not be working today right so one has to spot those trends and opportunities before kind of deciding that look i want to go this way um plus there have been changes in in terms of the approach of companies for example companies who are completely d2c 
um, now are willing to you know work with marketplaces because a huge uh, kind of uh, thrust is kind of uh, we're seeing a lot of demand coming on the marketplaces also, and hence there will be a combination of channels. So omni channel is something that um, uh, people need to look at. uh because there are revenue streams in each of these channels of course how you know how do you pay yourself is a different matter but i think it depends on how the demand patterns are going to come back and that's something that we are watching very carefully okay sure so with this we'll just take one last question and shama we can have your perspective uh, quickly on this uh the question is from amruta she is asking how are ndfc businesses transforming in times of covid just a quick interesting perspective to the comments by the two panelists uh, you know prior to covid happening consumer finance and lending to consumer purchases was always considered a highly risky uh, business uh, and uh, i just want to share some numbers that seem to be coming out of the like, collections if you look at the collections today you know a lot of moratorium has been provided to all kinds of loans across the sector right so whether this is housing loan micro finance small business loans vehicle finance and so on and so forth consumer finance has has also been provided moratorium but we are the, the 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 best collections that are coming from the field as we see today are coming from consumer finance borrowers uh, so people who borrowed to buy a television a refrigerator or whatever else you know are the ones who are really showing very very high collections uh, are, are making the repayments very uh, very well so i think this will show as good track record going forward whichever way whichever field sort of takes up in terms of the first um in terms of recovery i think from a financing perspective i think consumer finance has come turned out to be quite the hero i must say